Amen. What a great time of worship. And they're not through. They're going to come back in a, in a moment. But I'm Pastor Bill, and I want to welcome you today to our celebration of Christmas. And it's a great joy that even in a time like this, our worship teams have figured out how to social distance across the stage and uh, still lead us in a wonderful celebration of our Lord. And I know it does our heart good to celebrate the birth of Christ. And so we're glad that you're here. Uh, we welcome all of you who are watching online. And if you have your Bible, open with me to chapter 2 of the Gospel of Luke. Uh, Luke chapter 2, uh, the, the wonderful chapter of the Christmas story. And I'm going to read uh, beginning with verse 6. And so would you stand with me to honor the reading of God's Word It says, the time came for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. We will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and laying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace among those with whom he is pleased. Oh, that story never grows old. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you so much for the incredible story of the birth of our Savior. God, the fact that he was born in a manger is such a beautiful reality, Father. He was born for everyone. God, he came to be the Savior of the whole world. He is the light of the world. And we give you praise for him today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Oh, the story of Christmas never grows old. And but we've never had a time where we need to hear it more than today. I love that song that we just heard about the light that has come. The chorus of, the, of that song that we just heard says, The light of the world, born as a babe, redeeming love sent down to save. His life for ours, sent in my place. Our light has come, our debt has, is paid. And, and that, that is the... The greatest good news that the world has ever known. That is the good news. Notice the four things that we see in that chorus. Four great words of truth. Number one, the light of the world was born as a babe. The light of the world, the light of the whole world was born as a baby in a manger. That's what Christmas is all about. That is the message of Christmas, the light of the world was born as a babe. Why? Why was he born? Why did God send his son born as a babe? Well, John 3.16 sums it up, right? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Whosoever, I'm a whosoever, I have believed in him. Notice that verse tells us two great things about God. John 3, 16 tells us, number one, that God loves us. He loves us. He loves everyone in the whole world of every nation, of every language, of every tongue. The Bible says, for God so loved the world, the world, all the people of the world, every person. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. The message of Christmas is that God loves you. No matter who you are, no matter where you are, no matter what language you speak, no matter the color of your skin, God, the Father in heaven, loves you. He so loves you that there is no way to measure the degree of God's great love. The Bible says that God loves us. That's Christmas. That's what Christmas is about. But it also says 
that God desires to spend eternity with you. God so loved the world, He gave His Son so that whoever believes in Him will not perish but have eternal life. God loves us and God wants us. God desires for us to have eternal life. But not only does He desire for us to have eternal life, the Bible says that Jesus came so that we could have abundant life. In John 10, 10, Jesus said these words. He said, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Who is the thief? His name is Satan, right? He's the devil. He's real. And and he lives on this earth, and he has come to steal, to kill, and destroy. And man, is he doing a good job. There are a lot of lives that are being destroyed and wrecked and ruined by Satan in the very day that we lived, and ultimately his desire is to kill us. But Jesus said that the thief comes to steal and kill and destroy, but I came. I was born in a manger. I have come that you could have life and that you could have it abundantly. And whosoever believes in Christ not only has eternal life, but has abundant life. Even in a time like this, even in a dark and difficult time, when we are going through a global pandemic and there's lots of fear and anxiety and suffering in our world, because of Jesus Christ, we have a life that is full, a life that is meaningful, a life that is secure, a life that has purpose. And, and there's nothing that the world can put on us that can rob us of the joy of our salvation in Him. Oh, indeed. The light of the world was born as a babe. And God loves you and God desires for you to have eternal life. The second stanza in that chorus says, Through redeeming love, He was sent down to save. Through God's redeeming love, redeeming love, a kind of love that desires to set man free. He, he, was, he came down to save. What did he come down to save us from? What did he come to redeem us from? Well, from our sin. The Bible tells us in Romans 3.23 that we all have this problem. There's not one of us that has not been infected by the problem of sin. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Oh, we don't argue with that. I mean, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that my sin is piled high. I know that I have sinned against God more times than I want to count, more times than I want anybody to know. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. The glory of God is right here in the Bible. And and how many times have we disobeyed the Word of God? Have we done our will instead of God's will? More times than we can imagine. And the Bible says that our sin has great consequences. The Bible says in Romans 6, 23, that the wages of sin is death. The wages, what we earn, what we deserve, because we have sinned against God, we have earned and we deserve death. Not just physical death, eternal death and eternal separation from God. That's what we've earned. And and, and it's interesting, it says the wages of sin, singular, not plural. It's not a, a matter of how many times you have sinned or how much you have sinned that separates you from God One sin separates you from God. Just one sin separates us from God, and and, and it separates us from the eternal life that God desires for us to have. God loves us. God desires for us to have eternal life. But one sin separates me and you from eternal life and from God. But here's the good news. Here's the message of Christmas. The third part of that stanza says, His life for ours sent in my place. His life for ours. You see, there's not only a manger in the story of Christmas, but but there's also a cross. You see, He was born to save. He was born to die. Jesus Christ, born in a manger, was born under the shadow of an old rugged cross. 
And, and, and he was born to give his life in our place. So how can a sinner like me and you, how can we be reconciled to God who loves us and desires for us to have eternal life? Well, the Bible answers that problem, right? His life for ours, sin in our place. Romans 5, 8, one of my favorite verses in the whole Bible, says that God demonstrated his love for us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Those two words, for us, for us. Christ died for us. Do you realize this morning why Christmas is so special for you? Because Jesus Christ was born for you. He was born so that you could be saved and you could be reconciled to God. And not only was he born for you, but God demonstrated his own love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He was not only born for us, but he died for us. He died in our place. He took our death. He took our sin. And he died in our place. Why did he do that? So that we could have reconciliation to God our Father and eternal life. In in, in the fourth stanza of that song, it says, Our light has come and our debt is paid. Hallelujah. Our debt is paid. Our sin debt. Our sins against God. He took our place. Our debt is is paid. I love the prophecies in the Bible that speak of Christ. Many of those prophecies foretold his first advent, and there are many more that talk about his second advent. And every prophecy related to the first advent of Christ, his first coming, were literally fulfilled. Yes, he was born of a virgin. Yes, he was born in a manger. Yes, he lived a perfect life. Yes, he died on a cross. Yes, he was a suffering servant. Yes, he rose from the grave. Everything was foretold, and he literally fulfilled every one. One of my favorite prophecies is found in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 6. This prophecy was written about 700 years before Christ was even born, and it speaks of his death on a cross. And Isaiah 53, 6 says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to our own way. Yet God laid on him the sins of us all. Hallelujah. Our debt is paid. You see, our sin debt is so large and it weighs us down. If, if this was all the sins you ever committed, every time you broke the God's will and God's word in this book, it's on you and it weighs you down. And do you realize with me this morning that if you try to get to God by your own righteousness, by doing good works, by doing good things, by practicing religion, that no matter how hard you try to get to God, your sin weighs you down. Your sin is always between you and God. And no matter what you do, you can never come to God. Your sin is between you and God. But the Bible says that God was born in a manger. He was sent for us. And God came down to earth in the person of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that all we like sheep have gone astray. We've all turned our own way. But watch this. Get this. But God laid on Him, on Jesus, the sins of us all. He took our sin. He bore our pain. He he sacrificed for us so that now our debt is paid and we can be reconciled with God and we can become one with God and we can be saved for all eternity. Hallelujah. And the only way that we can be saved is by faith in the Son of God. In Romans 10, 9, it says it so purely that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, that Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, 
you will be saved. Saved from what? Saved from our sin. Saved from the eternal death that that sin brings. Whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. I'm a whosoever. Oh, the greatest day of my life and the greatest decision I've ever made is the day that I trusted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And you can too. He so loved the world. Even while we were yet sinners, He died for us. If you've never been saved, if you've never believed, if you've never put your trust in Him, my prayer is that today would be the day. In a dark time like this, we need the Lord And my prayer is today would be the day that you would confess Jesus Christ as the Lord of your life and that you would believe, not just in your head, but that you would believe in your heart that Christ died for you and he rose from the dead. Would you bow with me? As we bow before God, I'm going to pray that God the Father would speak to your heart this morning, that God would draw you to his son Jesus Christ. And as our worship team comes back, they're going to sing a song called, I Believe. I want you to listen to the words of this song. It, it, it professes faith. It says, I believe. And my prayer is today that the words of this song would be the desires of your heart, that you would confess your faith today, that you would say, along with this beautiful song, that I believe that this is not just a fable. This is not just a song. That this wonderful story of Jesus Christ is the wonderful story of salvation, the good news that God loves you and God gave His Son so that you could be saved. And I pray that you would... You would say with the choir, I believe. Father, oh Lord, I pray that you would speak to every heart here today. We thank you so much for the good news of salvation. It is the best good news the world has ever known. It's not just a fable. It's not just a song. It's reality. And I pray, God, there would be many today that perhaps have never put their faith in Christ, that today would be the day that they would say in their heart, I believe. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I believe. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ that he gave his life for us so that we could be saved. In Hebrews chapter 2 verse 3, the writer of Hebrews says, How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? And the answer to that question is we can't. If we neglect so great a salvation as this, we cannot escape the consequences of our sin. But beloved, through faith in Jesus Christ, we can all be saved. If you have never received Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you've never put your faith and trust in Him for your salvation, I would invite you to do that with me right now. Today, you could be saved. It's the greatest decision that you would ever make. Would you just bow your heads with me now and close your eyes here in the room or if you're watching on TV, I want to invite you to be saved, to give your life to Christ, whether you're watching from home or here in this room and you want to express your faith in Christ, let's do that together through a prayer. Would you pray with me right now? Pray in your heart. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for coming to this earth, for your birth in a manger, for the holy life that you lived. And thank you, Jesus, that you died for my sins on the cross. And I praise your holy name that you not only died for me, but that you rose from the grave. Today, I confess that I believe. I believe that you died for me. And I believe that you're alive today. And I want to ask you right now to forgive me for all of my sin. I confess my sin to you. And I open my heart to you as my Savior and my Lord. Forgive me and help me to live for you for the rest of my life. Right now, I receive your forgiveness. And right now, I receive by faith your gift of eternal life. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
And if you prayed that prayer and you really meant it in your heart, welcome to the family of God. Hallelujah. Today is the greatest day of your life. It's the greatest decision that you've ever made. Right after this service, we have a reception called Meet the Pastor. I'll be right out these doors to the right before you go out the front. And I would love for you to come by and let me know that today is the day that you believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me celebrate that with you. If you're new to our church, if you're a guest, I would also love to meet you. Come by for just a second. Let me officially welcome you to our church and greet you. And I have a gift that I'd love to give you as well. Or maybe God's leading you to join our church. You feel like that North Park is where you want to belong and be a part of our family. You can come by and join our church. Whatever the Lord has laid on your heart, I'll be there. Come and see me. And if you're watching online and if you prayed that prayer and opened your heart to Christ right now, take out your phone or your tablet or computer and send me an email or a text. Let me know, please, that you opened your heart to Christ today. I want to celebrate with you that decision today. Let's pray together. Father, oh, how we love you. We know that you loved us first, and we know that you love us more. But God, we love you. We love you, and we thank you for the greatest gift that we have ever known, the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, born in a manger, who died on a cross, who rose from the grave, who ascended to heaven, and who is coming back again. And we look forward to his second advent, and we say, Lord Jesus, come. And before he comes, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, we pray that we'll see many people come to know Christ, many people saved. And we pray there have been those today who have put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said, Amen.